A yeast starter is a way to drastically increase the number of yeast cells that you'll pitch into wort. A starter is essentially a mini fermentation, only you're making yeast, not beer. You should use a yeast starter when you need to ferment stronger beers, like Imperial IPAs or barley wines, but lagers will need more yeast as well. Any beer will benefit from the use of a starter, and in general terms, the more yeast you use, you will make cleaning tasting beers that ferment faster. Using a starter is a good idea when using older yeast, or yeast that's been stressed by shipping. To make a starter for your yeast, you need to make a wort with a gravity of around 1040. The most common volumes of starters that we recommend are 1 half gallon and 1 gallon, or 2000 mils and 4000 milliliters. To make wort for these volumes, follow the following recipes. For a half gallon, you'll want to add 7.2 ounces of dried malt extract along with one quarter teaspoon of yeast nutrient. For a one gallon batch of starter, you want to add 16 ounces of DME with half an ounce of yeast nutrient. Always use the lightest colored malt extract that you can find so that little to no flavors are transferred to your beer. Don't use hop extracts to make starters because the hops can disrupt the yeast growth. I recommend that you use a small amount of nutrient in your starter. It's optional but this will help your yeast ferment your beer later on. Boil the wort for 15 minutes to sanitize. You can use a small pot on your stove to do this, or you can boil in an Erlenmeyer flask. Never use these flasks on electric ranges or hot plates. They will crack. If you use an Erlenmeyer flask, you can cool the wort in an ice bath without transferring. Alternatively, you can start your yeast using a gallon or half gallon jugs. Be sure to cool the wort before racking into these vessels. Pitch your yeast into your starter vessel. Cover the opening with a sanitized piece of tin foil. The positive pressure created by the active yeast will keep out any unwanted critters. You can also use a foam stopper, but these cost more than tin foil and can easily harbor beer spoiling bacteria and yeast. Let your yeast starter sit at room temperature, 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, for two to three days. Gently swirling your starter occasionally will improve results. Using a stir plate will provide you with the best results. Be sure to clean and sanitize the magnetic stir bar that goes inside the starter when using a stir plate. The morning of or night before you brew, place your entire starter in a refrigerator. This will settle out the yeast for you. Before pitching your starter, gently decant or pour off the liquid above the yeast. Leave a small amount, about a cup or so, inside so you can swirl the starter and rouse the yeast right before you pour it into your fermenter. If you have any questions about making or using yeast starters, please feel free to call us at 1-800-450-9535 or email us at outpost at homebrewers.com.